who spend most of his life on the run, running from his past, running from his family, running from the consequences of actions of others, running from the consequences of his own actions. He was a man marked by deception, someone who had uh, wrestled his way through life, often at the expenses of other people. But now, on the brink of returning home, Jacob found himself at a crossroads. His journey back wasn't just a physical one, it was a journey of the heart, a journey towards peace that would ultimately reshape his life and his relationships. As Jacob approached the land of his birth, the memories of his deceitful past came rushing back, I'm sure. He had cheated his own brother Esau out of his birthright, cheated him out of his blessing, and the fear of Esau's anger loomed large in his mind. Jacob knew that he couldn't move forward without confronting the brokenness he had left behind. It was as though the weight of his unsolved conflict with Esau was pulling him back, preventing him from stepping into his future. But Jacob didn't just need to make peace with his brother. He needed to make peace with God. And so as he sent uh, his family and possessions ahead, Jacob found himself alone in the dark, wrestling with, with more than just his fears. In the stillness of the night, a mysterious figure appeared and Jacob engaged in a struggle unlike any he had ever known before. This was not just a physical battle, it was a spiritual confrontation, a moment of deep reckoning, personal reckoning. As the hours passed, Jacob held on, refusing to let go, even as his strengths diminished. This was the defining moment of his life, a moment where he could no longer run, no longer deceive, and no longer avoid the, the truth. In that struggle, Jacob wasn't just wrestling with a man, he was wrestling with God himself. This was not a simple physical battle, it was a profound spiritual encounter where Jacob's entire being was brought to the edge of self, every moment of resistance broken at that one place. Every effort to hold on was a reflection of the deeper turmoil within his soul. It was uh, as though the weight of all his past deception, fears, and unsolved problems, conflicts, were being laid bare in this intense, mysterious confrontation. This wasn't just a battle for survival, it was a battle for transformation. In the grip of the struggle, Jacob was forced to face himself, to confront the man he had been, and to recognize his deep need for change. But more than that, Jacob was being drawn into the very presence of the Almighty God. This wrestling match became the vessel in which his faith was tested, where his pride was broken, where he came to understand that true strength is found not in deception or in the ability to outmaneuver others, to control and manipulate, but in surrender to the will of the Almighty God. It was in this divine struggle that Jacob's heart began to shift, to change. He realized that to move forward, to reconcile with his brother, to fulfill his destiny, he needed something more than what he had relied on all this time in the past. He needed God's blessing, he needed God's approval, peace with God and a new identity that could only come from divine intervention and he knew it and he won it. So Jacob held on, refusing to let go until he received what he so desperately needed. This was a moment of profound humility, profound, but it wasn't about humility. Only it was about desperation and determination. Jacob wasn't seeking to win a physical fight. He was seeking peace, a blessing that would redefine his entire life forward into the future. 
In that moment, Jacob's struggles became a moment of transformation, a turning point where God, seeing his persistence and his need, gave him a new name, a new identity, and with it, the peace he had been searching for all along. Isn't God great? When the dawn finally broke, Jacob emerged from the encounter with a new name, a new identity. No longer was he to be called Jacob the deceiver. His new name was Israel, the one who had wrestled with God and prevailed. But this victory didn't come without a cost. Jacob was left with a limp. A physical reminder of the night he encountered God and was forever changed. With his new identity, Jacob now faced Esau, not as a man who had stolen from him, but as a brother seeking reconciliation. He approached Esau with humility, bowing low and offering gifts, unsure of what would happen next, but instead of anger. The anger he had feared so much. Jacob was so mad with the embrace. He saw came running to his brother. He saw ran to meet him, throwing his arms around his brother. And the two wept together. The years of estrangement melted away in the moment of an expected grace. What Jacob discovered is a truth that resonates throughout the ages. Peace with others began when you have peace with God. Before he could reconcile with Esau, Jacob needed to confront his own heart, to wrestle with God until he was transformed. You know, many of us find ourselves in a similar place as Jacob, at a standstill in life, wrestling with God, unable to move forward because of unsolved conflict. We carry the weight of the past mistakes, the burden of broken relationships, and the fear of what might happen if we try to make things right. But like Jacob, we need to stop running. We need to face the conflict head on. Not with fear, but with the strength that comes from an encounter with God. Listen, the, the path to peace is not always easy. And it often requires us to wrestle through the night. But as Jacob's story shows, it is the wrestling in the moments of struggle and surrender that we find our true identity. It is in those moments that God transforms us and prepare us to be peacemakers in our families, in our workplace, in our neighborhoods, in our own lives. And all other relationship uh, can only be achieved when we make peace with God himself. That's when we are empowered to make peace with others. Our hearts are softened, our fears are calmed, and we can approach those we have hurt or been hurt by with a spirit of humility and reconciliation. Why are you wrestling with God today? What conflicts in your life are keeping you from moving forward in life? Take heart in the story of Jacob. Learn from it. Know that peace is possible, but it begins with the moment of surrender, the willingness to wrestle God until he blesses you with a new identity, a new heart, and a new path forward. When you allow God to change you, you can become an agent of peace in your family, bringing with you healing, healing to the relationships that once seemed uh, beyond repair. And like Jacob, you may find that when you approach others with a transformed heart, a transformed heart that was uh, uh, given to you by God, the embrace you receive from others is far greater than anything you could ever imagine. That's where you find peace.